Hey, Pastor Gary here for another Wednesday Word. Hope you're doing well. Uh, this morning, I'd like to start off our Wednesday Word by asking you a couple of questions. Uh, do you know what your purpose is? Uh, what drives you? Uh, is it home life, work life, school life, spiritual life, recreational life? You know, for many of us, our lives have become siloed, you know, where we have our, our work life and then we have our home life and then we have our social life. And then, you know, so in, in each of those areas, they don't intermingle. It's just siloed. It's, it's independent of each other. But with God, there's no distinction between those areas of our lives. You see, God has a purpose for our lives. But unfortunately, many of us, many of us don't have any idea what that purpose is. We become so focused on the things of the world that we lose focus on God's calling. We're all driven by, by one thing or another. We're all driven to do something or to be something or to have something. And it's either by design or default. We either live for the purpose that God designed us to, to do, or we live according to the demands of our schedule and the expectations of others. You know, once I'm a big proponent of scheduling and ca calendaring uh, your day, because if you don't dictate your day, your day dictates you. Uh, and a lot of times when we just don't plan, you know, like they always say, you know, the failing to plan is, is planning to fail. And so we have to have a plan throughout our day, how we're going to tackle our day. Whether you're work or you're retired or you go to school or you have a job, we should always have a plan. But for many of us, we just leave things up to f just for however, you know, whatever the way the wind is blowing. And that's not the way to live, be live because then your day is dictated to you. For some people, you know, some people think that the purpose of life is making money. For some, it's having as much fun as possible. For others, it's being popular and well-liked by others. If these are your whole purpose in life, that's some bad news for you. Your life is ultimately going to be empty. The benefits of living life with a purpose, first thing, it reduces frustration. By knowing your purpose, you can reduce meaningless work. Otherwise, you may feel like you're always busy, but you never accomplish anything. It's kind of like riding a bike while you're still trying to put it together. You just never go anywhere. You're building, you're burning the candle at both ends. The only thing that you realize is that you're not as bright and, and as strong as you think you are because nobody can do it on, everything on their own. The second thing is, is, is knowing your purpose, it increases motivation. Think about it. Why do you get out? You know, we just don't get out of bed for no reason. We, when we get out of bed, there's a purpose. When we know what God wants us to do, you, we get excited. There's a sense of enthusiasm, knowing that we're what we're doing is for God's work. The third thing is it allows us to concentrate. Purpose allows you to focus and, to keep, and it keeps you on track. It allows you to ignore the things that can easily distract you. The things that take your attention away from God. Purpose not only helps you know what to do, but it also what not to do. Many of us get so inundated with life's frustrations and disappointments that we miss the purpose that God has intended for us. Ephesians 2.10 2, says this, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us new and in Christ Jesus so that we can do the thing, good things he planned for us long ago. So before we get into the, to the main uh, point of, of today's devotional, you know, again, those two questions is, do you know your purpose and what drives you? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just come to you today, Father. Father, we just, we give you this time, Father. Father, we ask that you just open our eyes, Father. Speak to us, Father. Reveal what your purpose is for, our, for us, Father. Father, we thank you and love you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. So how do we live on purpose? Philippians 3, 7 through 14 says, But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted a loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward for what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Well, amen. So verse eight tells us that we must know God. We can't know God's purpose for our, for our lives if we don't know, know God himself. Paul has discovered that a right relationship with God is based on not law, but on faith in Jesus Christ. It is not achieved by individual things, but, by, but it's given by God not won by works or accomplishments, but accepted in trust. Verse 13 says that we must forget the past. Whether your past is good or bad, you can't focus on it. You can't focus on the things that happened in your past. You, uh, you know, what accomplishments you, you, you gained or what bad things happened to you. Paul is saying that Christians must forget all that they have done and remember only what they still have to do. You can't rest on your laurels. And the in the Christian faith, there's no room for those who that don't want who want to rest and, and want to celebrate their past successes and, and accomplishments. If your past is bad, you can't let that you can't let it keep you from doing the Lord's purpose. If your past is good, you can't depend on it. You have to continue to press forward. Verse 13 to 14 says, We must have a worthy goal. Have you ever noticed that if you do not have an agenda for your life or even for your day, one will be provided for you, as we spoke to earlier, either by the events of life itself or by other people? There's nothing wrong with setting goals, but your ultimate goal must be to please God so that we can hear those beautiful words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Verse 14 says that we must realize that our purpose is eternal. So when you go on a vacation, do you unpack all your things from your suitcase and put them in the dressers or put them in the closet? Not me. I just leave everything in the suitcase and when I need it, I just take it out. I figure it's going back in there. I don't bother with getting everything all settled. I mean, I'm just there for a short time because I know that in a few days, I'm going to have to pack it all up again. You may or may not agree with my vacationing habits, but it's important that we have this way of thinking when it comes to life. Sure, we might be here for another, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, but compared to with eternity, it's just a weekend trip. This life is temporal. Sometimes we spend all of our energy trying to have a comfortable and successful life here on earth. Sometimes we, we, we spend so much time and energy thinking about what we need now and what we can gain now that we forget about what we're gaining in heaven. It seems that we easily forget that we're just passing through. Now, we not only unpack our suitcase, but we try to decorate the hotel room too. We want to paint the walls, put a new carpet, hang up some pictures. Be, be careful not to get too comfortable that you forget your purpose while you're here on earth. See, pleasures won't last. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 2, 10 and 11, Solomon said, about, said this about pleasure. All that my eyes desired, I did not refuse them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure for my heart was pleased because all of my labor and this was my reward for all my labor. Thus I considered all my activities which my hands had done and the labor which I had exerted and behold, all was vanity and striving after wind and there was no profit under the sun. See, our possessions won't last. First Timothy 6, 7, Paul says, for, for we have brought nothing into the world, so we can take nothing. We, can, we cannot take anything out of it either. Prestige won't last. Matthew 19, 30, Jesus says, But many who are first will be last, and the last first. We can't live on purpose by accident. Paul is insisting that to the end of the day of the Christian life is to, is to live life like an athlete pressing on towards God's purpose for which we are always, that is always in front of us. 
We should never stop and rest and retire being a Christian, but always practice, always train by sharing God's word, by diving deeper into God's word, by reading the Bible, by praying to God, by being in church, being around fellow Christians, discipling, ministering, pouring into people, and having people pour into us. Our purpose is to share Christ with the world, with the lost. And we can't stop say because we've done we we did it in the past, or I'm done doing that. I'm done serving in that ministry. I've done my time. That's something that we as Christians we we never finish doing our time, because again, this life this life here on earth is temporal. Our prize is heaven. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray, Father God. Father, I thank you, Father. I thank you for the reminders, Father that the job of a Christian is to share you with others, Father. Father, to pour into people, Father. That's our job description, Father. That's what we're called to do, to love God, love people, and reach the world, Father. Father, I thank you for the reminder. Thank you for the encouragement, Father, found in your word, Father, so that we can continue to fight the fight, Father, to run the race, Father. We thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. A couple of announcements. I know, you know, we always sell, we, and, and we do, I, th I think we do a great job of celebrating our ministries. We do a great job of, of really highlighting the areas that, that, you know, often get overlooked, like our food pantry, our clothing pantry, our salt team, our praise and worship team, you know, and, and I thank you uh, for, for praying for your pastors. But, you know, one, one group of people that that's that gets overlooked that really does it, it they're the glue uh you know you don't see them on sunday but i tell you what monday through thursday and even friday and saturday they're working and so i would just like to personally thank um miss kathy and miss camille uh they both do a tremendous job uh, of just keeping the church going you know all all the back office stuff, the finances, the, you know, making sure that, that, that that's taken care of, you know, uh, Miss Camille, making sure, you know, that with our paperwork and filing and answering phones and, and, and just making sure that she's the backup to Miss Kathy and, and helping my, me, especially helping me. I, I can't uh, thank her enough for, for all the insight and just the positive and, and the encouraging words that she's continued just to share with me. So Miss Kathy, Miss Camille, just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And as a church, uh, please be sure to reach out to them and just let them know that, you know, you, you are praying for them uh, and encourage them because a lot of times they they do these things and they don't do it for, for praise, but it, it, it's often overlooked because it is uh, behind the scenes. So thank you all so much for everything that you do. Um, Pastor Matt is having a fundraiser for the children, youth and children's uh, ministry uh, to help offset some of the cost of camps. And so at both campuses this Sunday, uh, Matt, Pastor Matt, or who uh, the person handling over at Magnolia, we're going to be selling these masks right here. Check these out. These are, are pretty cool. They have the Believers Fellowship uh, uh, logo and, and our church name on it. Uh, the cost is ten dollars, uh, fifteen for two, and so uh, they're comfortable. Uh, but and if they can fit on me, they can fit on you. So uh, again, they're going to have these at the at church on Sunday, both at the Spring Campus and Magnolia Campus. Uh, the cost is ten dollars for one, uh, fifteen for two. So be sure to uh, pick yours up on Sunday. Uh, finally, uh, see you in church. Uh, Pastor Joe will continue his sermon series, Jesus and Genesis. Tell you what, it's been insightful. Uh, definitely um, worth uh, go attending uh, either in person or online. Uh, it's just been a, a great sermon series. And so it's been a blessing to me. Uh, and so I pl uh, plan on being there on Sunday. Uh, and, and so know that we'll be praying for you and can't wait to see you. Uh, God bless.